Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Ben Follett, and I'm a structural engineer for SIA in North America. Um, today, uh, the title of the webinar is SIA Engineer, Putting Together Calc Packages, uh, There's a Better Way. And so today, we're really going to focus on the engineering report and the reporting aspects of the software. Uh, before we jump into the bulk of our presentation, um, I want to spend a few minutes talking about just Nemencheck as a company and SIA as a company. Um, so for some of you, Nemencheck may new, be a new brand. Uh, you'd be surprised to know that we're actually the largest uh, AEC software company outside of the United States in what we call the EMEA region. We have many different companies and softwares that are under our Nemencheck brand. Um, some call from Graphisoft and Vectorworks, which are architectural-based softwares here in the United States, to Libri, which is a model checking software. Um, recently, we've grown under acquisition through uh, the purchase of Bluebeam, uh, great PDF software, and then also SDS2 design data, which we recently just purchased. The software, though, that we're going to spend the most time talking about today is uh, SIA, which is a finite element analysis software. So SIA is part of a new breed of integrated 3D structural design programs. And while it may be new to you, it's not a new software. It has a really long development history. Um, we've actually recently re celebrated uh, 40 years. Uh, and as you'll see in the presentation, it's a proven solution that really offers some nice benefits um, when you're trying to document your, pro your software in, or document your, your projects um, in this 3D environment. And so typically when we talk about C Engineer, we talk about what we call the four key benefits. Uh, fast and efficient modeling, advanced analysis and multi-material design, automatic and coordinated documentation, and BIM interoperability and post-processing. And so today, you know, we're really going to focus on that idea of BIM interoperability and um, coordinated documentation. And really, what are some of the problems that people have, that engineers have, with documentation in some of their current engineering workflows? And so really, creating documentation manually is typically a tedious and time-consuming process, with some engineers telling us that the creation of those reports sometimes takes about 20 to 30 percent of the engineering time on the project. And so most projects require output to be compiled from various softwares. As you can see in this slide, we pull data from Word and Excel and PDF and JPEGs to create one big report. I know in my experience um, in consulting, um, I, I had to create 2,000 page calculation packages for government projects with output from RAM and STAT and InterCalc and Excel and hand calculations. And really, putting all that together and compiling that took a really long time, not to mention the amount of time it would take if there were any changes. And so having to do that all, you know, and consolidate all that data into one cohesive report is a real problem. Additionally, many times we find that it's difficult to communicate what's going on in a project. In some cases, um, we just get a, a simple result or a simple table, and there's really no transparency to that result. There's really not any information that we can glean from that other than just you know, the area of reinforcement. And so, and other softwares provide you with reams and reams of tabular data that's difficult to understand and verify, let alone format that into a really usable uh, report. In addition, documentation is not only for final submissions. You know, output compiled in the reports can better illustrate how the structural systems work. This allows for more robust communication between engineers within the design process in addition to reducing coordination between architects, engineers, fabricators, owners. Um, you know, I just kind of created a, a simple example. You know, it's really difficult maybe to grasp um, the deflection or the deformation of an element by simply just looking at a value in the table. How does that value relate to how other things de deflect, you know? So having a graphic that you can pair with the deflection uh, numbers really enables you to back up those results and really get a better understanding exactly how the structural systems work. And really, this is a big advantage in the overall process. Finally, the big one, the big one that all engineers understand within this design and construction process is, is changes. So it's not, are these changes going to occur? Because we all know that they're going to occur at, at many different times in the projects. But how, how do these changes then get picked up? How do we change our our calculations, how do we change our, our results, and how do we document these things. So most of the time, this is a manual process, and any time you have to do something manually can lead to errors and coordination problems. You know, for example, we have changes that the architect makes during schematic design. We have uh, different system changes, like MEP system changes that happen during design development, where us as en structural engineers have to change plans or calculations. And finally, there's changes that happen in the field. There's things that get installed improperly, and then we have to um, you know, we have to submit 
drawings during or do calculations to try to figure out if things are going to work in the field. So this really requires you to need something that updates your documentation automatically, saving time while reducing the concern that changes haven't been coordinated or haven't been picked up. And so what we need is a platform where these problems have real solutions, where data from all the sources can be efficiently leveraged, where results are usable during design development as well as final documentation, and where model changes are automatically updated in the report, saving time and reducing coordination errors. And so that's really what we're going to talk about today. So I'm actually going to switch to um, my SIA model here. And so I'm going to switch to the SIA model. And we're going to use this SIA model to talk about how we can utilize um, how we can utilize the engineering report. So before we jump into the report, I just want to give a quick kind of introduction so everybody understands kind of where I am in the model to the interface. And so C is interface. C is really uh, like AutoCAD in this, or Revit in the sense that you can model very graphically. You can create information very graphically. And so we've got uh, buttons and toolbars along the top here, very similar to AutoCAD. We've got this tree window. So this is like a Windows Explorer-like interface that allows us to navigate the, the, the project through that tree window. Um, properties. So any item that's selected, we can see the properties here, very similar to how we would see it in AutoCAD or Revit. Um, and so now we can build the geometry and information, obviously, and then use the engineering report. So the engineering report in C is actually a separate executable. So it's a separate uh, program that runs inside of C Engineer. So really this allows um, users to create, update, change uh, the report dynamically while the model is also changing. So changes in the model are automatically picked up and updated in the engineering report. And so typically I have this on a second screen and you can work with these two at the same time. And so before we jump into the report, let's talk a little bit about some of the results that we can send easily to the report. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the results interface here, and I'm going to go ahead into, we're going to send a 3D displacement result. And so I'm going to first select part of the model, so I'm going to use a, a name selection, so I defined this selection previously as this moment frame, and I'll just get this moment frame here. And so with this moment frame selected, I can kind of zoom in to get my view, and then I can set the information for the type of output that I want to look at. So I'm just going to click refresh here, and we can get this output here. So we've just got a global deflection. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to actually take this screenshot, this picture, and I want to add it to the report as what we call a live picture. And we'll talk a little bit more about what a live picture is in just a minute. So I have all the different settings for the report. I'll choose the picture size. I could set a name and different uh, text scale factors. In this case, I'm just going to select a particular report, and I'm just going to insert it into the inbox. So just put it in a, in a repository for where I can use it later. Now next, I'm going to go ahead and switch to reactions here. And I want to uh, generate a re, uh, set of reactions for the seismic load cases in this uh, moment frame. And instead of sending a picture to the report, I'm going to right-click on it. I'm going to send this table to the engineering report. So I can send a, a table output to the engineering report exactly based on the output that I've created. So again, I'm just going to choose to keep it in the inbox. So I'll insert it and close it from the inbox directly into the report. Now I could add other different types of results. We could look at different results. But obviously, we're just going to use those two, that picture and that uh, table as the results that we're going to use. So now if I navigate or change to the engineering report, we can see this demo report that I've kind of started to create. Now the report, um, engineering report interface, you can see we have a kind of ribbon-like interface across the top with different options to do different things, regenerate, edit the pictures, you know, copy and paste different things. We can see the navigator, this is basically the table of contents, and then the new items list. This is where all the new items, import, or input, output, different types of items can be added directly to the report. And so um, if I go ahead and uh, work through the report here, we can see a few different types of items. So I've first added uh, a 3D model, so a 3D picture of the model in this case. Um, we have uh, some different options that we can use for, um, we have the 3D model, and so we have different options that we can utilize within the 3D model for kind of what we can do and, and things. One of the options we have is to export that as a 3D PDF. And so I'm just going to choose to export that as a 3D PDF, and we'll see um, kind of how that works or what that works um, going forward, how that works going forward. Um, we can also just start to add generic uh, items into the list. And so in this case, you know, we can go ahead and add in uh, 
you know, certain sets of information. So uh, maybe we'll go ahead and add in uh, uh, the set of cross sections. So I'll add the cross sections list. And so it added, we add it in and it automatically re regenerates. And so it just regenerates here with the full list of cross sections. Obviously, this is a detailed output. We can always just switch our table template to brief, for instance, and just have a much a different table with some, some basic results here. We can also go through and um, add other information like loading information. So I can switch to um, down to this part of the, the, the project and I can add in or double click on load cases. So this will give me all the load cases, but in this case maybe I want to add specifically the information that's found for a particular load case, maybe one of the seismic load cases. So I can select the table, change my selection to a list of the load cases. So I'll just add the EX as the only one I want. And then I could go ahead and actually right click or double click on this and change the table. So maybe I want to set the table so that it shows different information for my lateral loads than it does for my gravity loads. And so we can manipulate this table and then save it as a template that's saved over and over again that you can use over and over again. In this case though I've already preset that template so I'm just going to go ahead and switch to the seismic template and regenerate this information and we just have that same EX kind of template that we have there. Now there's other information. Here I have a, a screenshot or a picture. Now I'm going to grab a picture, um, not by just copy and pasting it in, but I'm going to have a picture from a certain path on my uh, desktop. So I'm going to choose the picture path. So let's just navigate to my desktop here. need to find my folder for the report. Here we go. And then I'm going to bring in this picture of the, this is a picture of the map of the values of SS from ASC 710. And so this picture um, is tied to that uh, path location. And so if the picture within the path location changes, the picture in the model will, or the picture in the engineering report will update. And so we'll be able to change, you know, if we, if we had to update a picture, if we had a, a picture of a, an output of some sort, it would update based on that information. Now let's go ahead and add in those, that information that we brought in through the inbox. So I'm just going to expand the inbox and I'm going to go down here into my results section. So I have a specific folder for those. I'm going to add in first my reactions. So just double click to add in my reactions. We'll get that table of reactions that I added. So maybe in this case I'll change my, uh, change my extreme from node, not so I don't get every uh, node reaction, but global so I get the worst case reactions based on what I was looking at. So I've got the worst case reactions for those particular elements. And let's go ahead and change the name selection. I don't want the worst case reactions for everything, but the worst case reactions for the moment frame that I'm looking at. So there I've got now a very specific result. Now I can also go ahead and add in, add in the document picture. So when I bring in, uh, when I bring in the document picture, that 3D displacement, I accidentally added a couple here. So let's just go ahead and delete those. Yep. When I bring in that document picture, we can see that that document picture is the same document picture that I've, I had added in previously. And so the benefit here in SIA is that the benefit here in SIA is that we had results, we have these active results from the active project. They're the results that we brought in from the project. And we can see here in the uh, we can see here in the interface that we have uh, this kind of lock symbol. It looks like a you know like a, a you know just it looks like a lock symbol. And so we can see that some of the results are unlocked, right? So we have results that are unlocked and we have results that are locked. Now, the beauty of this is that we can actually do design iteration. We can have different design results from different runs of the model. So in this case, I had results here that were for um, displacements from uh, a, certain, a certain different seismic force with an R value uh, of six and a, a risk category of one. So we had reactions and displacements that coincide with that information. I brought those results in and I locked the model, or excuse me, I locked the model here, and then I was able to take that information and then you know rerun my model change my seismic loading and then compare it to the reactions and um, let's add in this document picture here compare it to the reactions and the displacements that I have with the under the new conditions the R value of three and the risk category of two so we can see here you know the new deflection is a little over an inch whereas the old deflection was a little over a half an inch. So we have, we can do result comparison. So this is what we were talking about before in the sense that documentation is not just for the final output, 
but it's also for design development, being able to communicate design changes, being able to look at different design iterations, figure out where things are, um, you know, where things are changing and how those things are changing so that we can make the best decision for our um, designs. Now, when we're all said and done, when the report's all complete, uh, the entire report can be exported to a PDF using SIA's internal uh, PDF writer. And so I'm just going to go ahead and export the PDF. We'll just call it maybe test here. Now, when the PDF's exported, for me at least, Bluebeam is my, um, my base PDF reader. And so it'll launch automatically in, PD in, in Bluebeam PDF where I can start to review the output, where I can make comments on it, where I can mark it up. If we go ahead and look at the uh, 3D PDF technology, we can see here that we have a 3D PDF, so I can choose different views. So we can look at a, a side X view, or we can look at a, a top-down view, and so we can see different views of the model, and we can zoom and zoom in and zoom out in this information. Or I can go to a certain part of the model, and maybe I want to add some sort of comment. So I can go ahead and choose the text call-out feature and add, you know, some different, some type of comment. You know, this is a seismic value. So we can add that comment, and then we can do our go through our whole markup stage and or submit this for final documentation or value engineering. And so using not only the engineering report, but then the, uh, the Bluebeam functionality and PDF functionality together is a really nice workflow. So why is this documentation important? So creating documentation you know, typically is manu manu a manual process. Now this is more, way more automatic. You know, we have this ability to organize this information and really utilize this information during our design process. So leveraging that data, it's no longer difficult. And then changes, they, they're updated automatically. You know, there's no more having to, to manually update things where you're worrying about errors and you're worrying about issues like that. We can just have these changes updated automatically simply by hitting the regeneration button. So with that, um, we're going to turn. I'm going to turn the presentation over uh, to uh, my friend and, and fellow CU user Nathan Bissonette. Nathan's a senior engineer for Fraser Industrial Company in Santa Monica, California, and he's really been focusing uh, and using C Engineer a lot over uh, the past uh, year or or two, uh, and focusing a lot on engineering report and and specific and special kind of workflows uh, for his office. So I'm going to go ahead and change, uh, give him the presenter, and uh, he will uh, continue on with the presentation. So, Nathan? Okay, great. Thank you, Ben. And hello, everybody. My name is Nathan Bissonette. I'm a senior engineer with Fraser Industrial Company. I've been working with Ben for about five years now, and I'm very happy to introduce you to uh, Fraser's use of the C Engineer program, and especially the engineering report. So. A little bit about Fraser Industrial Company. We're a structural steel storage rack manufacturer based in Long Valley, New Jersey. Uh, my office is here in Santa Monica, California. Fraser has been uh, providing storage racks to the industry for over 65 years. We have 10 manufacturing plants across North America. And we do all the fabrication in our shops, such as the cutting, punching, welding, and then uh, painting and before shipping out to the field to be assembled by the personnel. So the picture on the left here is a frame being assembled in a jig. You can see the welders there. And the second picture here is a bundle of frames being dipped in our blue paint tank. These are some rack definitions. Uh, we have the upright frame which consists of a horizontal brace, a diagonal brace, and the upright column. The upright column is attached to the floor slab by a base plate and uh, typically expansion anchors. The sh loads themselves are sh supported on shelf beams which are fixed to the rack columns by structural bolts. So today we're talking about engineering. So Fraser, having been in business for a long time, has seen the codes change and improve and in some cases not improve. And uh, so we uh, had historically used the ASD and equivalent length methods. And when I joined the company about eight years ago, I had not been very well informed. So when I joined the company, I, I uh, did, not, did not know very much about the ASD method, so I had only learned about LRFD. 
Similarly, the uh, equivalent length method is uh, a little bit out of date now. The, they, they know that the K factors are difficult to compute for real structures, and it's started to shift towards the direct analysis method, which is now found in the AISC manual. And so the direct analysis method lends itself really well to uh, modeling because it uh, requires a, to find the displacements of the structure. So SIA engineer offered these analyses, which are, were very useful. The linear is to find the elastic uh, forces and displacements. Nonlinear can be used to determine the P-delta effects and design the columns for amplified moments. Stability we would use for a tall, slender structure, for example, one that was loaded at mid-height or non-prismatic so that we could find a real buckling capacity. And finally, modal analysis is used for uh, transverse and longitudinal seismic uh, periods for these uh, seismic forces. So why uh, did we decide to go with 3D modeling and CO? Well, the modeling itself is a very transparent because you can share this model with other users, consultants, engineers, uh, anybody can, can take a look at these models. And so it was very appealing to have all of this data contained in one file rather than being spread out uh, over many different files or in a spreadsheet that was, um, you know, hidden behind locked cells and whatnot. The output is fast and professional, as Ben has already pointed out. We have the ability to customize our checks which is very important in the rack industry, especially because we have these designs of frames and beams that are being repeated hundreds, sometimes thousands of times throughout a warehouse. So any savings can add up very quickly. And finally, responsive to changes, the customers are, are constantly uh, proposing changes to the elevation. So we want to be able to take our existing model, make manipulations for loads and elevations and, and just check it like that rather than start from scratch. So today I'm going to be talking about the modeling features that make reporting easy. I'm going to introduce you to design forms and finally talk about engineering report. So these are some features which Fraser and I have used not only to simplify the model understanding itself, you can look at only certain portions of the model, but also in the reporting, as Ben showed, you, you can sort the reporting by layers and name selections. So it's not just to look and make changes to the model, it also helps to organize data in the reporting. The name selections are uh, I'll talk about and then design forms. So the layers, um, most of you are probably familiar with layers already there in, in AutoCAD and other software programs. They can be turned on and off change colors, and SIA has a neat feature where you can take multiple layer groups and then combine them together as a save selection, and then you can pull up that save selection of layers at any time. Name selections are very similar, except that you can group different layers together and save them in a name selection, as Ben had showed. So that's going to come in handy for the reporting. Design forms uh, is a, for those of you who don't know, is a, a also developed by SIA and it can be used in either a standalone or integrated into the structural analysis model uh, and it's specific to engineering calculations. So it can be used to create tables, graphs, pictures, and custom libraries. I'm going to demonstrate a design form here. This design form is designed for, to take the post load on a rack column and check the slab underneath to see if it has enough bending strength. So you can see the inputs are on the left hand side, the outputs on the right hand side. I can't manipulate any of these numbers by clicking uh, on the right hand side. It's only for display, which is very useful if you're sharing your form with others. And then if changes do need to be made, you can always go back to the builder file. So here I'll set the thickness down to a more realistic value, say six inches. And you'll notice that the diagram will update accordingly. So and then if we take a lower bearing pressure, the diagram will stretch out or condense and gives you a really good depiction of what's happening behind the numbers. And I can do a slab check in two minutes now. Okay. 
So inside of the engineering report, I'm going to demonstrate how to add a, a title page, a disclaimer by an external picture. We're going to have a drawing list and component drawing picture, and then the seismic data. So this is a rack model. Four levels, no load on the bottom level, and you can see the beams and the uprights here. I'm going to introduce you to the engineering report now. The calculations already been run for this, so there are already results available in the model itself. That's an important feature of the engineering report is you have to have results already in the model in order to display the results. Okay, so there's the results. Here's the engineering report. This is currently blank. So I'm going to add a cover page. And I have a cover page here, a template from Microsoft Word. And I'm just going to select this area, copy, and then paste it into the first page of the report here. So that, that would be just some simple text. Then if I want to add my disclaimer, I have an external picture. Find the path to the disclaimer. You can see it's a little large so that this pictures can be adjusted. Now I'm going to add the drawing list in Excel. So to control the flow of documentation, you can add page breaks, headers. Okay, so the uh, drawing list. This would just be a list of other a, more A-sized drawings that would be approved with the calculation to make a snapshot of the drawings I reviewed at the time. Okay, so add a title, another page break. Fraser uses AutoCAD uh, in our design work for creating the layouts and also for creating the fabrication drawings. So we already have these AutoCAD drawings available to us, so it makes sense to use this in the engineering report. So I can copy the AutoCAD drawing, and again with a paste, you'll now have the AutoCAD drawing into the report. <coughs> the uh, design form is going to be used to include some seismic data. With the ASCE provisions, there are complex uh, load combinations. So we want to have a, a way of showing how these load combinations were arrived at. So this is a, another design form that is intended to read a zip code, look up the seismic coefficients, calculate the base shear coefficient, and then calculate all the load combinations. So this made use of a custom library inside of C Engineer where you can include any data of your choosing. So we loaded over 32,000 zip codes into the program. So this is 90040. And for each zip code, it will look up the highest values within that uh, zip code, which were found on the USGS website. It's not going to give you the most precise answer, but it usually will give you close enough for a uh, quick design. Once I've established that these are the coefficients I wish to have in my report, I'll just close out of here. And now the seismic data will be integrated into the report and can be, again, manipulated at any time just by double-clicking on it. So a feature I want to tell you about is called report templates. So report templates are work that I've done before and I want to save to be reused or I want to bring it in later. So this would be saving the report template. This would be my report intro. And this would then save it into my report templates folder to be used at a later time. Now I'm going to in, in, bring in another uh, report that I've already prepared just to demonstrate some of the additional features. So this is a short report 
intended to demonstrate some of the cross-aisle seismic design parameters. So we have a page formatting comes in. Header and footer and table of contents would usually go after the cover page. Okay, so now we have a table of contents that's going to automatically know what pages are on which, and it'll take all the headings for me. I don't even need to regenerate the table. It's just automatically regenerated anytime I make a change. So here we have a list of all the cross sections used on the project. A front view depicting the rack member sizes, side view with the rack member sizes, a diagonal interaction check, and a table which further documents the diagonal interaction check. This is a cross aisle seismic uplift. We have an 8.8 .8 kip reaction in this combination. And that 8.8 .8 kips is automatically read by the design. This is another design form to check anchors. The 8.8 .8 kips is read by the design form. Given a certain anchor specification, it will check the interaction capacity of the anchors. So now I'm going to talk about what happens if we need to make some changes to the model. First thing is to disconnect the nodes. Now I'm going to show you how parameters are used. So in a parameter, instead of just having a, a simple de definition of this node by a coordinate, x, y, and z, the coordinates are further defined by a parameter definition. So this coordinate z is defined as h4. So is this coordinate z over here, also h4. So these two nodes are tied together by the parameter. So when I change the parameter, both nodes are going to change. I'll go into the template dialog where the parameters are stored. And I'm going to change the elevations from 80 to 100. Uh, 100, yes. And 180 to 40. I'm also going to change the loading to 6,000, 6,000, 8,000 on the top level. I click OK and you'll see that the model will automatically update. So now we have the changed model with the new parameter definitions of heights. And you can also see that the top level has more load on it, designated by the taller arrows. This goes, carries through to all of the cross aisle loads and down aisle loads, which are also tied by parameters, but by the use of a formula rather than just a value. Now I'm going to, I brought the load up and I knew uh, from here that my um, diagonals were at 87%. I'm going to increase the, the horizontal member size and demonstrate how to add another picture which would show a, a different member. So to change the horizontal I can make use of the layers. So here's activity by layers. I'm going to turn off every layer except I'm going to turn off back on all only the horizontals which would be defined in the model. Now I can simply select all the horizontals and change their member size from an inch and a half to a two by two. Next we have an arbitrary profile which is very useful in the rack industry because we will reinforce these columns to varying heights. So the arbitrary profile allows for a given member to have two different cross sections. So I'm going to select all of these arbitrary profiles and instead of having only the boxing up to two inches, I'm going to make it up to 60 inches. So you can see that now this member has an, an arbitrary profile definition and it's different. Finally, the anchors are done by a 1D member data. So I have all of the aisle columns on the layer A3 which is consistent with the anchor check is only checking the layer A3. So this is how I can control the data that's being fed into the design form. So I know that if I want to change the anchor on the A3, I can use the 1D member data for this design form. 
And here we have another custom library which shows all of the anchors that are commonly used. So we have Simpson Powers Hilti. We'll look at a Simpson instead of the five eighths I had before. I'm going to make it a three quarter with a six and a half inch embedment and can change the spacing between the anchors, the compressive strength of the concrete, the number of anchors. So once I save this, the de design form has a new definition of the anchors. So now I'm going to rerun the calculation, connect the nodes together first to establish the correct buckling lengths. Only going to run a linear calculation for this. Going back to the engineering report, I'd like to go through one at a time. Here we have the new front first picture with the updated shelf elevations. Second picture is going to automatically update the horizontal definition. Now instead of just showing the diagonal, I'd like to also show the horizontal. So I'm going to copy the, these three and then I'm going to paste them here. So you can see now that I have two diagonal definitions. Uh, so they both say diagonal. I want to change this one to the horizontal. They're different because I have this one is updated and this one isn't. Now within the picture we have picture properties where we can look at the different results. Now instead of combination three which is critical for the diagonals I want to look at combination six which is critical for the horizontals and then use a filter layer to the horizontals only to, to show only the horizontal results. So now we can see that the horizontal is at 60%, but it doesn't match this table. So I need to also update this table to show the horizontal. And I'll put a filter on it. Instead of showing all of the columns and diagonals, I'm going to show only the third horizontal and change to a detailed output. So now we can see the 60% is arrived at here with a more detailed depiction of where the member forces come at and the capacity of the upright. Finally, the anchors, since I increased the center of mass and the loads, the uh, uplift has increased accordingly. Now if I update the design form as well, the autom automatically will read the new uplift, the new anchor, go through with these new values and make the check accordingly. So this has been a big step towards removing a lot of the uncertainty from our documentation process, but I'm going to take it one step further and I'm going to show what happens if we want to show the vertical seismic load distribution. So here's another standalone design form. And this design form is, I'm going to show a, a project. Rather than a form, I, I've saved a project that's specific to this one. So here is the project. put in the loads uh, at the actual elevations that I've moved them to. And this will now have a vertical seismic distribution of forces and also a secondary check on the horizontals and diagonals. This could be used for a quick design or to further document the design intent on this particular project. So now this is imported. I can change the scale. And now we'll have all of the overturning demands for the plan checkers review. So 
So we talked about parameters, model manipulations, and manipulations within the report. In conclusion, this has allowed me and Fraser to prepare more expansive reports and effectively document our models. So the process is very interesting and it's I'm not it, it is time consuming. It's taken it's taken time to program these forms, but I had very little programming experience coming into this and I now feel that I'm very pretty well versed in, in programming because the language is so straightforward and, and everything that I've really wanted to do, I've found that I've been able to do with some help. So the, the investment has, has definitely paid off and is con, con, I plan to continue with the development. And the making changes to the model is efficient because they're automatically included. You don't need to worry about any discrepancies uh, between the model and the report. And finally, as you could see throughout the presentation in the PowerPoint. This can be used for many other different types of structures and broken down into manageable bits using the layers and name selections. So with that, I thank you for your time and I'm going to turn it back over to Ben. Okay, thank you, Nathan. Um, I guess uh, we want to take, uh, we want to open up uh, some time for uh, some questions. Um, and so I'm looking here, we've got a few um, that have come in uh, about, there are some questions about design forms um, and uh, some of the other things. Um, one of the questions we got in was that uh, you mentioned that you can import reports from other structural design programs, how exactly that you can do that. Um, really, it depends on the program. Um, so like Nathan showed, things can be just copy and pasted directly from uh, Word or Excel or uh, you can, uh, you know, bring in other documentation. Obviously, you can create PDFs out of those programs and import those PDFs directly in um, with something like um, CD, C design forms. Obviously, those two work integrated together. Um, and so that's kind of the, that's probably the easiest way to, to manipulate and use that information uh, together. Um, there was another question about kind of the past when we, de when different uh, uses for pictures. So there was a question about pictures. Um, so like if you have a picture that you want to include your report, do you need to send that picture in the folder, that picture with the report? So the answer to that question is actually no. Um, Certainly, if you want to have a path of the picture established and you want that picture to update as you change the picture within that path in your engineering report, you can do that. But if you wanted to um, use templates like Nathan talked about and um, give those templates to everyone in your office, you could use, um, there's a button called embed. So you can embed the picture into the report so that the picture stayed the same. Now, certainly you would lose some of the, you'd lose a tie to the path, but the picture would remain in the report. Um, so there was a question about um, copying, like uh, when you copy and paste uh, a drawing in, is it edible in AutoCAD when we double click on it or is it just an image? So it is just an image, however, it is tied to that, again, it's tied to that AutoCAD um, report. So like if you would make a change in AutoCAD to that particular AutoCAD DWG, then, and you save that AutoCAD DWG then, C would recognize that that AutoCAD file updated and changed and it would bring in the new version of that AutoCAD file. So there's no AutoCAD drafting in the report, but you can do some changes with those things. Um, so there was a question about um, the load combination and the picture title. So uh, there is uh, an option to include, so there's some different things that you can do. So one of the things you can do if you put in a picture is you can put in the load combination and then the picture um, and then the picture uh, as kind of a indented item within the load combination. And so in that case, you would get the load combination automatically with the picture. Um, I think there's also, there's also a way that you can kind of just enable the load combination that you're looking at um, within the titling and stuff like that. And so there's, you know, certainly that option as well. Um, So as far as, uh, we're getting a lot of questions um, on changes. So when you copy and paste from another program, say like MathCAD, to see and know if there have been changes and show those changes. So it, I guess if the question would be if there was a previous MathCAD item and then you copy and pasted a new MathCAD item. 
It's not going to recognize the changes in those things. There's no kind of change management or change update or um, comparison of output in that case. But again, if you know if, if it was a PDF output and you um, if it was a PDF output and you updated that file that you had saved from a you know a MathCat output, those would update. Um, if the, uh, so there's some questions about locking and unlocking the report. So if the report items are locked, that means they will not regenerate. Um, certainly you could then unlock them uh, to regenerate them, but the beauty of locking report items is that you can lock them and then copy and paste those report items as unlocked items and then kind of do a comparison between the locked items which had different results or different um, you know, load input or different model, a completely different model, and then compare those against the model uh, output that's current. Um, we had a question on uh, some just analysis capabilities of the software. So there was a question just on, you know, about seismic loading. And so C has a lot of really complex um, modeling and analysis capabilities, like Nathan showed some of them. We talked a little bit about seismic. So whether it's you know equivalent lateral force procedure or um, modal response spectrum analysis, you can include those different types of things. Obviously, there's steel, concrete, cold form steel, composite steel design functionality. You can model in uh, wood and aluminum and um, uh, precast in the software, so you really don't have any limits on what you can do in that case. Um, so the structure uh, is modeled within, like we we showed um, the C engineering report and the CIA modeling interface kind of work together. And so the engineering report is just kind of a module within the modeling interface, within the, pro, the FEA software interface. And so you would model within, you wouldn't model in the engineering report, you would model and make changes to that model within the, um, within the CIA software and then those modeling changes based on pictures or tables that you had added to the engineering report would be updated. Um, we have just a generic question about a, a, a tryout. So, uh, yeah, you can get a tryout of SIA, and obviously the engineering report is included within that tryout of, of SIA engineer. Um, the tryout's available on our website, which is www.sia.net, and right on the landing page, right on the first splash page, there's just a button for a free tryout. So you can just uh, fill out that um, information there, and you'll be sent a free tryout, free 30-day tryout. It's also a full version of the software, so, so there aren't any limitations of what you can do. Um, so there was a question, some confusion about are these tools separate? So they're not separate. You can't, you don't buy the report generating tool separately. It works cohesively with C Engineer, and so the design you would buy the uh, or you would purchase C Engineer, which is the FEA software, the design analysis tool, and within it, it would be the the engineering report. Um, with that, so you can't, you wouldn't be able to directly link, say, RISA or RAM or something to the reporting tool because it's not an external tool. It works um, with inside C Engineer, but you would be able to, um, if you were creating documentation or if you had part of a model created in CIA and some part of the model created in another software for some reason, you could pull in PDFs or JPEGs or screenshots or copy and paste data from those other softwares into um, C Engineer. Um, question about uh, design forms um, just being a separate purchase. Design forms, the interface uh, that Nathan showed, um, the builder interface to be able to create your own stuff, it is a separate uh, software purchase. Um, and so that would give you the functionality to be able to not only create your own standalone design forms, but then also create design forms that can be leveraged within the software, uh, linked within the software like Nathan showed. Um, Yeah, so that there is an option. Someone asked a question about changing options within a picture. So when a picture is, a, there's two picture items. There's a live picture, and then there's what's called a, uh, a screenshot picture. So like if I, um, on the screen here, if I'm showing my, my screen and back to uh, my output, I can put in a screenshot, which is just a static image of the report, or a static image, excuse me, of this particular item. And so that can't change. But when I did a live picture, I can actually go into the report 
into this particular picture and I can just edit the picture properties and then just pick a result that I want to change. So I can say I don't want to look at the seismic result anymore. I'm just going to look at the live load result or something like that. And then since that's a live view of the model, it'll update the report. So it's giving me a new, uh, a new picture. It's giving me a new report item. It's giving me new output. And that's the same for tables or other report items as well. Um, we can leave the questions open for a, a, a few other. There was also a question about just in when it comes to documentation, obviously people ask questions about Revit. So we do have a Revit exchange. So we have the ability to send in from different types of information to Revit, uh, model information, loading and reaction and internal force information, all that type of information can be sent to Revit. That's through a separate link. Uh, we've built it based on the API of Revit. Um, and it's just um, the link itself actually exists within Revit. Um, to send that data back and forth using the structural analysis or the analysis model type in Revit structure or in Revit. And so that exchange is possible through that link and also through IFC, which is a, a vendor neutral file format that C and many other BIM uh, software support. So we have a few more minutes if there's any other questions that um, people want to put into the, the question window. I think that we've, um, we've done a pretty good job of answering uh, most of the questions. If there's other questions, um, if there's other questions certainly um, you can contact us directly. Um, my information and, and Nathan's information is uh, included on the last slide here. Um, so our emails are included here. So if you have questions directly for Nathan, certainly you can contact him. Um, there will be a certificate of attendance that we will create um, for uh, the report uh, for the, the webinar. So uh, just give us a few days. If uh, you're sitting in the if, if you're sitting in the office with um, a couple of engineers and you only had one registration and you're, you're sharing screens and stuff like that, please just email um, either myself or you can email, um, well, email, email myself and uh, just let us know who uh, were the people that were with you attending the webinar and we can get you guys all um, certificate of attendance. Um, and yeah, with that, uh, if there's any other questions, please email us um, either directly and uh, we appreciate your time. Nathan, we appreciate your time. We thank you for uh, your presentation. It was incredibly informative and I think was a great uh, showcase of uh, different ways to, to do different types of analysis and, and leveraging different features and functionality um, within C Engineer. So we really appreciate that. And uh, without that, without further ado, uh, I appreciate everybody for their attendance and uh, there will be a webinar recording of this on YouTube um, later today and also on our website later today. So we thank you very much and uh, we appreciate your attendance. Have a good day. Bye-bye.